Have you ever noticed how reviewers get different benchmarks for the same component? Like maybe 4900K. You might think it's because of variations in temperatures, different benchmark software, or testing conditions like a state of installation. And you'd be right. Those factors definitely affect performance. But let's take a step back. Imagine you're testing a view 4900K under identical conditions. Same temperature, same component, same software, and even the same testing methodology. Yet, different results. So, what's really causing this difference? To answer this question, we need to understand how a CPU is really made. So, a CPU or even a GPU is in fact actually manufactured on super micro scale, rather nano scale. Though roughly the size of mere pixels on a 4K screen. Clearly, the transistors are incredibly small. For instance, here's the mitochondria, a dust particle, and a human hair for size comparisons. And this is possible because the CPUs are made in an extremely controlled environment. In fact, what if I told you, i3, i5, and i7, and even the i9, are all actually just i9 processors. Yes, during the manufacturing process, a large silicon wafer taken roughly the size of 100 CPUs or more, and using a laser engraving tool and some special magnifiers, the entire i9 CPUs is imprinted on the wafer in a grid form. This gives you maybe 100 i9s. But the problem is that there are several factors at the atomic scale that cannot be controlled because of which we do not get 100 i9s. Which means that out of 100 i9s, only about 50 to 70%, depending on the yield, have all the complete functioning 24 cores. Some may be two to three non-functional, some may have even 50% non-functional cores. So these incomplete chips are taken off and sold as i3, i5, i7, depending on the number of their functional cores, with any additional cores being disabled. Okay, but this doesn't really answer the question. Why do we get different results with the same i9? Well, it kind of does. You see, even in the fully functional i9, some may be having stronger connections, transistor connections that is, over the other, and some may be weaker. So even with a perfectly controlled environment, we still have a 1-2% to error margin in their performance, simply because it's impossible to perfectly replicate a CPU's architecture at an atomic scale every single time. Now, this process is called chip binning, and this is where the concept of silicon lottery comes into play. When you buy a chip, you're essentially taking a chance on how well that particular piece of silicon will perform. Some chips are naturally a bit better, and they might run faster, use lesser power, or stay cooler, or go to a higher clock, while others may not be as lucky, even though they're labeled the same way. But it's not just the processor where this happens. The same applies to memory modules and other components in the system where you have lithography at a nanometer scale. Even if two memory sticks are technically the same, slight differences in their manufacturing can lead to noticeable performance differences. So when you see different benchmarks from different reviewers, a big part of the reason in this variation is component quality and performance, no matter how identical the setup might seem. So to summarize, here's why different hardware reviewers get different benchmarks. Not all CPUs are built the same due to their manufacturing limitations and natural laws of physics. Now, the scores depend on the entire PC configuration, even though they're specific to one component. And even motherboard and RAM manufacturers don't always follow Intel or AMD specifications and often try to overclock and underclock without letting the user know they're running outside the CPU spec. And in case you need a PC with your favorite processor in it, visit our website or you can even visit our stores in Gurgaon, Hyderabad, Bangalore and Mumbai for consultation. So stay tuned for more insights like this. Thank you for watching.